Hi everybody, I'm Kyle Schockenmeyer and I'm a senior engineer at uh, HashiCorp on the console team. And today I'm with David Yu, who is a product manager, my colleague on the console team. And today we'll be talking to you about using Vault for secrets management in console on Kubernetes. The primary goal of this is to allow our users to leverage Vault as a secret store for console on Kubernetes. And so now I'll hand it off to David and I will join you again in a few minutes and follow up with a demo as well. So to give you an overview of what we talk about today, uh, we'll first talk about how console and Kubernetes utilizes Kubernetes secrets. And then we'll go into what specifically console utilizes in terms of secrets and how it actually is able to configure the Kubernetes system properly uh, with console deployed. Next, we'll talk about some of the challenges that we're dealing with when we utilize secrets with console and Kubernetes. And we'll give you an overview of our new solution that integrates tightly with Vault. Finally, we'll walk you through a demo, and then we'll talk about what's next with console and Kubernetes and Vault. So how does console and Kubernetes utilize secrets? First of all, this is not a talk about how console and Kubernetes is deployed or all the different use cases that it provides. However, we'll be talking specifically to Kubernetes secrets, and console utilizes a number of different secrets for either secure communication or for actual configuration of the console cluster. Some examples include ACL tokens as well as gossip encryption keys, which are used to authenticate and also secure the encryption uh, communication between the actual agents. We also leverage TLS certs for communication across our cluster for RPC communication from client to server. And there are instances where configuration is actually stored as a Kubernetes secret, and we're able to actually properly deploy and configure components within console and Kubernetes. Now let's dive into some examples of how we actually utilize Kubernetes secrets. The first is TLS certs. So console and Kubernetes actually allows you to enable TLS via global configuration or home chart. Now, if you do not want console and Kubernetes to generate a CA for you, you can actually specify them using a TLS CA cert or TLS CA key Kubernetes secret that we can then use to generate server certificates. We also have the ability to actually generate client certs as well as proxy certs via the Connect CA, uh, which you can actually configure inside a console itself. This handles rotation as well as generation of the certificates. And finally, if you want to explicitly configure your client and server certificates, you can do so through the Helm chart by referencing a Kubernetes secret. Now, this is an example of a Helm chart, and you can see where the server certificate is actually referenced adds a Kubernetes secret, and then the client's actually loading in their certificate, the certificate for its client itself uh, via Kubernetes secret as, an, as a volume. And you can see there's an option for you to also load it, um, or load any configuration to the, the client agent if need be. Now, console also has the ability to, to encrypt gossip communication. And gossip is utilized to actually communicate the health as well as the members across the entire cluster. So if you use a gossip encryption key, you're actually able to go ahead and encrypt the traffic that we actually uh, transmit over UDP. Now, there are ways you can actually generate the, the gossip encryption key, one of which is the console keygen command that's available within the console CLI. You can also utilize a new feature within the Helm chart called uh, gossip encryption auto generate, which actually takes a gossip encryption key that generates from console keygen and stores it in a Kubernetes secret for you automatically. Now keep in mind, when you use console in a federated environment, you actually need to share the gossip encryption key uh, with the federated secondary data center so that that data center can also participate in its gossip pool. This is an example of where the gossip encryption key is actually referenced. And you can see where the key, uh, the, the actual name of the secret is referenced as well as the value. So you can start the cluster with gossip encryption enabled. Next, we have ACLs. So ACLs are an ability to actually allow console to authenticate any RPC requests or API calls it makes. And it goes ahead and ensures that the communication across clusters are secure. We have the ability to bootstrap the ACL system and, and, and actually create what's called a bootstrap ACL token that is used to create further ACL tokens within the system itself. So you can either have console generate that for you, or you can actually specify that 
via an actual secret within the Helm chart. Now keep in mind when you're federating uh, clusters, when you have a secondary and primary data center where you're federating the actual communication, uh, what we have is the ability to actually provide an ACL token to replicate ACL tokens across different data centers and allow communication to actually happen between the primary and the secondary. This is an example of you know, where the actual bootstrap token is specified in the Helm chart. And this is, a, is specifically a secondary data center. And you can see that a replication token has been created as a Kubernetes secret. And then we'll go ahead and utilize that for any ACL token replication from the primary. And finally, we'll talk about the Connect CA. So Council does provide a built-in CA out of the box, but most of our customers as well as our practitioners actually utilize Vault as a Connect CA, which allows you to go ahead and provision certificates for the proxies as well as the clients. And what we can do is actually configure that via config file, store that as a Kubernetes secret, and then go ahead and utilize that for, for service mesh communication. Now, this is an example of a config file. We actually define the address of, let's say, the Vault server. And then we can also see uh, the token actually being explicitly defined to communicate to it securely. Inside of this is the, an actual Helm chart example where a Kubernetes secret for the Vault config is defined and where we can pull out that config file. And then you can see there's a secret that's also associated with that to, to communicate securely with the Vault cluster via Vault CA. Now, there are some challenges that customers and practitioners face when they're leveraging Kubernetes secrets with console. And so one of the things that we've seen is that when organizations have standardized on Vault, uh, they are not allowed to use Kubernetes secrets in their environment. So they want to use Vault and use something like a Vault agent to expose those secrets to their pods. So something like that is currently a manual process and something that you'll have to configure yourself. Uh, and it's not super straightforward to do other types of rotations or mechanisms inside of the actual console deployment. Similarly, if you're going to rotate a secret, all the secrets that are actually uh, inside a console need to be performed in its own, rotation needs to perform in its own special way. So doing this repeatedly and consistently is usually very challenging due to the number of steps that are involved in rotating a particular secret. Let's go ahead and also look at some of the ways that people have been able to address uh, utilizing Vault for secrets management when they're, when they're using it with console. So one of the things that we've seen is that folks have leveraged console template uh, quite frequently to be able to pull certain data out of a system and then reference that to, to configure the console system itself. And this is an example where the Vault KV is utilized to pull out a secret and using console template and a script is actually run to rotate that thing, that secret itself, which in this case is a gossip encryption key. Another example is where you can use something like a, a new system that's been built for Vault on Kubernetes. So Vault on Kubernetes has the ability to actually expose a secret as a CSI volume. And so what you can do is you can actually mount that secret from that volume and you can go ahead and reference and read that secret directly as if you're reading from Vault. Uh, however, it has its own challenges when you're trying to rotate secrets as we referenced before. And so doing this with console and Kubernetes is not so straightforward. Now I'll turn it over to Kyle to talk about the solutions that we built to address these challenges. Thanks, David. Um, so now I'd like to talk to you about um, some of the solutions that we've come up to try to address these challenges. And so in doing this, we came up with three things that we wanted to accomplish. The first is that we want to provide the option to replace all Kubernetes secrets in console with vault secrets. And this is going to require using, utilizing several different um, vault secret engines. Um, one is leveraging the vault PKI secret engine for TLS. And so this is for like generating certificates. Um, and then the other is to use the Vault KV2 secret engine for other secrets like the gossip encryption key or the bootstrap ACL token. Um, the second challenge that we have is trying to establish how console can be bootstrapped by Vault secrets. And so the solution we've came up, come up with is to 
use the uh, vault agent injector um, in conjunction with annotations on the console components to bring vault secrets into the console pods. And finally, the th one thing that we wanted to address at the end was that the goal is management of secrets for console to be driven by vault operators. And so what that means is rotation would be triggered by an update in vault or via issuing a new TLS certificate from vault to console. So let's talk about this in two phases. Um, one is bootstrapping. How do we mount these secrets from vault into console? And so the way we've accomplished this is by adding annotations to the uh, console components so that the vault agent injector will catch them and mutate them to attach the secrets when they're started. So we add some annotations. Uh, the vault webhook will add the vault init container, which actually does the fetching of the secrets. And it'll also add the vault agent sidecar. And when the init container runs, it will reach out to the vault cluster, fetch your secret, and attach it to the pod in, uh, in a particular location that you can define by your annotations. So that gets the secrets into the containers. And now we want to know, how do we rotate these secrets? So to rotate them, recall we've attached sidecars uh, to our components. So these are our console servers and our console clients. So the first uh, sidecar is the vault init container. This templates all of those annotations that we've added to the components, the console components, and then attaches these vault secrets to the pods. Next, the vault agent sidecar is attached. And what it does is it synchronizes the vault secrets in the pod between vault and their uh, file in the pod. And so were anything to change in vault, that would be reflected down into the pod and you would see these changes in the files. Finally, we've added a third sidecar called the credential rotation sidecar. And this is responsible for executing all of console's specific rotation logic per secret. So recall that the secrets are difficult to rotate and they rotate all in different ways. And so we had to build some logic into a sidecar which understands how to rotate secrets based on what they are. And so how does that look? The vault agent sidecar actually updates the secrets in the pods periodically. So it, it pulls vault on a period. And it also has enough logic built into it that it can determine when you're getting close to an expiration on a certificate. And so it will also reissue those certificates when they're about to expire. And so that will result in the files being updated inside the pod. Now the credential rotation sidecar will sit there and watch these mounted secrets for changes. And when a file is changed or one of the secrets are changed, then it will know to execute rotation logic based on that secret and what it is. And now I'll step into a demo. Today I'd like to share with you a demo of some upcoming features that enable console on Kubernetes to seamlessly integrate with Vault as a secrets backend for storing console secret data. If you recall from our previous slides, console secrets in the current architecture are stored as Kubernetes secrets. In a future architecture, these same secrets will be referenced in Helm the same way as current, but via secret paths and keys instead of Kubernetes secret names and keys. For this demo, we'll focus on how we can enable users to bootstrap and rotate a gossip encryption key in console using Vault as the secrets backend instead of Kubernetes. The gossip encryption key is used by console to encrypt communication between its servers and clients along its gossip protocol. It's an interesting topic because managing the gossip encryption key is non-trivial, and it represents a fair amount of operational overhead and complexity, while it also plays a large role in securing the communication within the system. So to get started, let's have a look at the system I've got installed. First, there's a vault installation in the cluster. And for simplicity's sake, this is just installed locally in the cluster. However, we would want to target an architecture where a user could specify a vault address and credentials so that you'd be able to reference an internal or external vault cluster easily. So I've just installed this cluster using this vault Helm file, although I'll skip the complexity of actually installing it, bootstrapping it, unsealing it, and enabling the secret engines 
and just point out the one thing that I've changed, which is to uh, enable the vault agent injector. We'll use the vault agent injector to mutate our console objects to reference vault secrets instead of Kubernetes secrets. So next, in order to bootstrap console with vault secrets, we need to actually create those secrets. Much in the same way as you would have had to create Kubernetes secrets to bootstrap a gossip encryption key. So first we'll run console keygen, which creates a cryptographically secure encryption key that will be our initial gossip encryption key in the system. We'll then store this as a vault secret, which I've already created, but it's just a vault KV put into the KV2 secrets engine. There are two extra things that are standard vault procedures that must be done to support this. One is to create a vault policy, which adds read access to the gossip secret. And the other is to create a vault role, which binds our future console Kubernetes service accounts to this policy. This is how console will have an authentication method with vault in order to retrieve the gossip secret. So next, I'll actually add this gossip encryption key into the secret that is in the vault UI. So we're just using the vault UI to create a new version of the secret now. We'll save that. Cool. So now that that is all out of the way, we need to feed this vault secret to console somehow. And in order to do this, we've modified the console helm charts to take in vault secret path and key for the gossip encryption key and apply that using the vault agent injector. The injector is a webhook that will take our Helm template annotations and mount vault secrets to our pods. So we'll set the gossip key using the existing gossip encryption stanza, and we'll use vault secret path and key instead of a basic Kubernetes secret key or secret name and key. So next, I'll go ahead and install console using this Helm uh, using this Helm values file. So in the background, what is happening is the agent injector is mutating our pods to attach vault secrets using the vault Kubernetes auth methods. And we're attaching a vault agent sidecar and our own console sidecar to manage the secret rotation. So as you can see, we have three containers now in console instead of one. So now that the servers are on, we can actually verify that the gossip key has been set in the key ring in console. So we can validate here using the key ring list command. And indeed, the gossip key did come in from vault and they match. So next, let's talk about rotating this secret. I'm guessing a lot of you have never rotated your gossip encryption key. You either don't know how or just don't get around to it. As I mentioned, it's a non-trivial process. First, you need to install the new key, validate that it's been replicated across the cluster, and then promote the key to be the new primary key. And finally, at the very end, delete the old key from the cluster once everything has settled. It seems simple, but in practice, this involves manually updating Kubernetes secrets, logging into a console server pod, and issuing a half dozen console commands, being sure not to introduce any typos. So instead, let's just simply utilize our new architecture to update the secret in Vault and rely on the logic of our rotation sidecar and the agent sidecar to rotate the keys in the cluster. So what I'm doing is fetching the is uh, printing out the logs from the console server leader for the rotation sidecar. For the gossip encryption key, we actually only want to rotate the gossip encryption key on one server. And so that's why we're doing the logs here. But first, we should generate a new key. Okay, now let's look at the logs again. If we go to Vault we, in the UI, we can just update the secret again. And what will happen in the background is that the agent sidecar will notice there was a change in Vault for this secret and then update it on the pod. And then the rotation sidecar will notice that that file has changed, that secret file has changed, and then initiate rotation. And so as you can see, it's installed a new uh, key, 
it's uh, validated that this can be the new primary key and then gone through and deleted the old key. And so as you can see, it's referencing the key that we just updated within uh, the Vault UI. And if we run console key ring list again, we can see not only did it install the new key, it did in fact complete the rotation process and delete the old key. What we've shown here is a preview of some upcoming features that will provide an ability to utilize Vault as the source of truth or your secrets backend for all of console secrets, not just the gossip key. And we're looking forward to sharing more of these features in our upcoming releases. And I'll hand it back to David. Thanks, Kyle. Well, thanks for giving us a great demo of our integration with Vault and console on Kubernetes. Now, let's talk about what's next in terms of integration with Vault. What we want to utilize Vault is for a secret store where we can actually leverage all of our credentials and manage all of our credentials and secrets with console and Kubernetes uh, securely. And there are opportunities for us to also do some automation when leveraging Vault as well. One specific use case that we've uncovered is rotating the Vault tokens. For example, when you're using Vault as a secret store backend or console connect, you'll notice that that Vault token may expire in certain use cases and also could be compromised. So rotating that Vault token automatically would definitely alleviate a lot of the pain as well as the challenges that people run into. In addition, when leveraging Vault uh, across a set of federated console Kubernetes data centers, you want to make sure that certain secrets are shared between those data centers. Uh, we want to make sure that that seamless integration works in place so that you can definitely utilize the same set of secrets across a number of different data centers when they're federated. And finally, although we actually go ahead and generate console client certificates for you uh, using the Vault PKI engine, uh, what we want to do is leverage the actual Vault CA to also generate the console server certificates so you can utilize uh, Vault PKI for all TLS within a console and Kubernetes deployment. So thank you for joining us today and, and we appreciate you spending some time with us. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and demo on how to utilize Vault and console and Kubernetes together. Thank you.